What the heck is up guys, it's Jacob here, and in this video I want to show you guys this electric vehicle charging station I made. It's a level 2 electric vehicle charging station, I just want to give you a quick rundown of it. And it's, um, I made it for my Fiat 500E. Now if you guys have an electric car or a plug-in hybrid, you're familiar with this uh, level 1 charger that's provided with the car. It puts out about 1500 watts power, just plugged into a normal 110 volt outlet, 120 volt outlet, whatever you want to call it and it provides power to your car and it takes about 24 hours or so to charge your car from zero to 100 percent. Now, you're all also familiar with these level two chargers that you can have installed for, in your house. They cost about a thousand bucks and probably another 500 or so for it to be installed by an electrician. So they're pretty expensive. Now I made this entire thing and installed it myself for about $200 of parts. So I just wanna kinda show you guys what goes into this, what I, what's in it and how it works. All right guys, so I'll just kind of show you the parts of this. The most expensive part here was the cable. It's about a $130 cable for 16 feet. It's a pretty heavy gauge cable, so the copper in here is pretty expensive and the connector itself is a pretty expensive connector. So this whole cable costs about 130 bucks. The rest of the $200 is just in all the price, the price of all the little parts inside. And um, it could be even cheaper than that if I made these in a larger number. But anyways, um. So it, it's wired straight into the wall, uh, straight into the panel at 240 volts. Now I know this isn't the proper way to do it. I mean, you know, we already had TV cables running through here, so I just kind of punched a little bit bigger hole in the wall and, you know, just tucked it back in there and it's all good like that. So, I mean, it does work. This goes straight into the electric panel on the other side and it goes into a 240 volt breaker, a 30 amp breaker, and uh, comes in with 10 gauge wire. So we'll take a look at that in a second and we'll take a look at the inside. Just going on the outside, we have an LCD here. Uh, you can't really see it in great detail yet. I'll, I'll show you it. And we also have these three buttons. They're three LED buttons. Um, now these uh, increase the power, the output power, this decreases the output power, and this changes our units from amps to watts. So I'll show you what that means here in a second. All right guys, so we can see here that the LCD reads 10 amps already. So what this indicates is that the car, or the charger rather, is ready to be plugged into the car, and it's gonna charge at a rate of 10 amps. So uh, with the increase and decrease buttons, we can actually, we can increase the uh, amount of power that goes into it anywhere from down to 10 amps or up to, let's see, 30 amps is what I programmed it to. So this is a 30 amp charger. It goes uh, up to 30 amps and um, down to 10 amps. So the last button, like I said, we could change the units between amps and watts. So this will indicate the output power in watts rather than amps. And so down to 2400 watts, that's your 10 amp rate, and up to 7200 watts at your 30 amp rate. And um, I hope to, in the future, make this a little bit more intuitive to where we can actually monitor the actual real-time power and like the charge times and um, also add like some networking capabilities to it to where we can actually have a web interface and we can show how much power has actually gone into the car and stuff like that. But for now, it's all just some little open loop controls. It does actually work though. So this does actually change the amount of power that goes into the car. All right. So now that we've kind of seen the controls and everything, let's take a look inside the unit. So, kind of a mess, I know. I mean, I tried to keep it as clean as I could, but it's not very clean. Um, but anyways, so just a quick rundown. We have uh, 240 volts coming in right here from the main panel. This is 10 gauge wire. Um, there is no neutral. There's no need for a neutral wire. We just have the two hot phases in a ground. And basically, um, these two hot phases go straight into this relay. Um, as we can see right here, and basically what happens is there's these little wires that also come out of the input power, and that goes, uh, one of them goes directly into here, one of the hot phases. The other hot phase goes into this fuse holder, it's about a 1 amp fuse, and that 1 amp fuse loops back into here, so this is protected by a 1 amp fuse. This is a 12 volt power supply, it puts out all the low voltage power that we need to run all of our uh, control circuitry for this, this and also uh, puts out the power to drive the um, power relay here. So um, this uh, runs on, it's just a, you know, 100 to 240 volt supply and it um, puts out 12 volts at 2 amps. And this doesn't even need 2 amps really. Even with a relay on, it really, it draws less than an amp. So um, this is all some custom circuitry that I made here myself. Just some prototyping when I was making it back in the day. And uh, this here is an Arduino Mega Board with uh, just an IO shield on it. 
And um, basically, so let me just kind of give you guys a quick rundown. So it's got a program that I made, obviously, in Arduino. This is the heart of the whole thing. It's got the brain, the microcontrollers on here. And basically, um, so the the big relay here controls the power that goes to the car. It uh, closes and makes a connection and gives power out to the plug only when it's safe to do so and when the car needs it. Um, so basically, we have a big power relay here. And so in outgoing to this cable, um, there is a, f a few pins on this. There's the two uh, power pins and the ground pin, and there's also a what's known as a pilot pin. And that's how this charger communicates with the car, and it knows, um, it tells the car how much power to give, so that's how we vary the power with those, with those little buttons there. So it tells the power how much power, it tells the car how much power it can draw, rather, and, um, it also t knows the state of the car, if the car needs to be charged or not, and that tells this relay when to open up. It knows when it's plugged into the car, all that. So that's all done through this little blue wire that comes out here. That's the pilot pin wire. And that's what all of this is for. So this is all monitoring this pilot pin. And it does it, it's all analog. There's no digital aspect to it. So it's all analog, and it does it with analog voltages. So we have a couple of voltage comparators here to monitor the uh, voltage state of this analog. So they detect voltage thresholds set by these potentiometers, these little um, trimmer pots there. And those monitor the, uh, the pilot voltage of this. They send their outputs here to this Arduino board and it uh, does what it needs to do with the program that's on there. And there's this little opto isolator here. This little opto coupler puts out the PWM signal to the pilot pin that the pilot pin sends to the car to tell the car how much power it has available to charge. So this tells the car how fast it can charge. We uh, have a little code here that drives this opto isolator to send out the PWM signals at a 12 volt level to this uh, to the pilot pin to the, go to the car. So it's all done using uh, just an Arduino and a little bit of custom circuitry. This big huge MOSFET up here um, controls the uh, power going to this uh, power relay. So this controls the 12 volt coil right here. And again, that's all determined from this uh, Arduino here. Um, so, I mean, I'm not gonna get into great detail of how it works and all the schematics and code behind it. If you guys really are interested in it and you really do wanna know, I can make a long detailed video of how to actually make your own level two charger. It's actually not too complex. I can show you guys the code and all the circuitry that goes into it. But um, this is actually a little bit more complex than it needs to be. It can be simpler than this. I'll show you guys a couple other designs I made here in a little bit. But for now, let's just go ahead and take a look at this thing in operation. I'll go ahead and show you guys uh, this thing as we plug it in. I'll also show you the variable current uh, function. We'll measure the actual current going into the car just to show you that these buttons really do work. And you can use this as a, a variable power uh, charger. So we can actually use this thing to charge at different power levels. It's not like a, a full... Uh, 30 amp charge if we want it we can actually charge at a lower rate than that so let's go ahead and take a look at this thing as we power it up all right guys so I have the big cable here this is the J1772 and I'm about to plug it in I'm not going to actually fully seed the connector yet I'm going to actually get a close-up of the LCD just to show you guys a few of the uh, states that it shows as we plug it into the car also, listen for, there's a couple relay clicks you'll hear. Uh, one of them is the signal relay, the other is the power relay. Uh, the signal relay is actually on the board. I'll show it to you guys here in a second, just because I didn't run uh, through that. But there's a signal relay that clicks. Once the signal relay clicks over, it sends the PWM wave to the car. The car uh, requests a charge state, and then you'll hear the big power relay click in the car, and then you'll hear a couple other sounds coming from the actual charging module on the car. And that is a full, um, charge uh, state. It, that's from that's all the, the processes it goes through before the car actually starts charging. So just listen for those uh, different changes. So here we go. And this is that signal relay that I kind of skipped over. This signal relay basically just switches between uh, the 12 volt level. So as soon as we plug it into the car, this relay will kick over. And that actually switches between a straight 12 volt DC signal to this PWM signal. And that tells the car how much power it can draw. It then uh, once the car recognizes the PWM signal, it changes the uh, voltage level on the uh, pilot pin rail, and then this Arduino will detect that and eventually activate this big power relay. All right, guys, so here we have it set to 30 amps, and it says ready. So we're going to go ahead and plug the connector in. 
you heard that relay click, it says not charging. That indicates that it is plugged into the car, but it's not yet charging. Once we hear the power relay click, we can hear it charging, and the car is in fact charging now. So the power is flowing into the car, and the car is charging. All of the uh, processes and all the states have uh, checked through, and it's actually charging now. So let's go ahead and actually look at the real-time power measurement, the current draw, and let's look at this uh, function of the variable power. All right, guys, so here I have just a little clamp meter, um, just a little amp meter that we can use. I'm just going to throw it on one of these phases right here real quick. And we can see that it's drawing 26.7 amps or so, so around there. It is set to 30 amps. The reason it's not drawing 30 amps is because the car is only a 6.6 .6 kilowatt charger, which isn't quite 30 amps. So the car doesn't actually need to draw 30 amps. It's only going to take as much power as it needs. So even though despite that this charger is set to 30 amps, it's not going to give it 30 amps. What that is implying is that the charger has the ability to put out 30 amps if the car actually needs it. But the car in this case doesn't actually draw 30 amps. It draws just a hair under it, maybe 27 amps or so. Um, so let's go ahead and I'll uh, push the, the decrease button and we'll see the current start to decrease. Now it's not going to go the first couple of clicks because again we're only drawing 27 amps. We can see that we have it, we start dropping as I keep clicking it. We're set to uh, 26 amps right now. So it's not, it, it is an open loop control system. It's not closed loop, so there's not any sensors or anything to detect the actual current and correct it. So um, right now, the only way we're changing it is in software. We're just sending a different uh, PWM duty cycle to this uh, chip out to the pilot signal. So that's how we're actually changing the current. So it's uh, actually pretty accurate for an open loop system. It's just using a couple of math algorithms, <laughs> algorithms to uh, make this actual uh, duty cycle to change the actual input current to this uh, charger. But anyway, so we can see that it varies quite a bit. We can go all the way down to the 10 amps. So this is the 10 amp setting, and it's drawing just a hair over 10 amps. So it's pretty accurate. Like I said, it's very good for a closed loop system. We're about, you know, at most half an amp off. So we're within, you know, 500 milliamps of uh, power. But I mean, that is quite a bit of power when you're talking 240 volts. That's about 120 watts. So it's accurate within about 120 watts or so. So that's pretty good. Um, so that's the uh, that just shows that the variable current setting does work, and we can increase that anywhere in the within one amp range. And as we saw, I mean. This this meter may be getting other interferences and stuff. It just changes as we move it around. So who knows how accurate this thing is? It's not uh, like an actual uh, shunt. It's actually just a you know just a clamp meter. So who knows how accurate it is? But it's it's pretty good. It's pretty spot on if you ask me. All right, guys. So here we are in the actual car, and we can see that it is recognizing it to uh, charging 240 volts, and there's the little charging lights. So. Um, we're at 85% charge right now. I don't know if you could see that. And the estimated charge time is 48 minutes. Now, uh, one thing I want to explain real quick that I, I and this has nothing to do with the charger itself, but the car. This is in this particular car. I don't know about other cars. I have to test it in our um, Ford, Ford, Ford Focus Electric. I want to see if that one does the same thing. But right now, I have it set to 10 amps, which is only 200, uh, 2400 watts, rather. And so um, with 10 amps, it wouldn't actually charge the car in this 48 minutes. And, um, let me close the door real quick. Make it, uh, there we go. Um, but yeah, this estimated charge time is actually, um, under the assumption that you're getting the full level to 6.6 .6 kilowatt charge. So this car doesn't really know that it's actually not receiving the 6.6 .6 kilowatts. Um, if I were to set the car to 30 amps and give it 6.6 .6 kilowatts, then yes, it would charge in 47 minutes. But right now I have the car set to, um, only 10 amps, which is 2400 watts. So the car doesn't realize that it's only receiving uh, 2400 watts, in which case it's actually going to take a lot longer than 47 minutes to charge. Um, and in some cases, there are uh, level 2 charging stations that are only 15 amps. Um, even in your own house, uh, sometimes people have 15 amp level 2 charging stations, which is only 3600 watts. So the, the, I would like if this car did actually take into account the actual l level of power that is being put into it, not just the charging level, whereas if it's level 1 or level 2, but also how many amps at each level it's, it's having put into it. So that's one little downside, and that's just, again, that's the hardware or software in this car. They haven't actually implemented it to be able to account for those, those changes. 
All right, guys, just real quick here. I want to show you guys a few other prototypes I made because I actually would like to make this a, a real project where I could actually make these things and actually sell them or make it an open source project out of this. And again, uh, if you guys actually really do like this and you think it's a good idea, then I might actually, if I get enough feedback on it, I might... Uh, go ahead and make videos on how to actually make one of these, design one of these yourself, and make this whole thing open source, just release some code. Actually, I accidentally, <laughs> the other day I actually formatted the flash drive that had all the code for my charger on it, so I would have to rewrite it all, which kind of sucks, but um, it was actually pretty crappy code anyways. It gave me a lot of problems for the longest time, so I'm happy I deleted it. Anyways, this is just a little box. I, just, I was just trying to make uh, the same version of what we have in the garage there that we were looking at, but it would have a NEMA 1450 coming in here, so that's kind of like the big uh, dryer plug that you're used to. And this would allow you to charge your car at like an RV park rate, even at home as a level 2 charging station. Instead of having a charging station installed, you could have just a little uh, plug installed, or if you already have a plug at your house, you could charge it uh, with a NEMA 1450, and that would give you a level 2 charging, so you just have 240 volts coming in. And... We had uh, the power supply here, so this is a smaller version of what we had in the garage, just a 1 amp 12 volt power supply, so you'd have uh, your power coming in there, and then the power relay right here, and all the cabling through here. And then your uh, power uh, J1772 cable would come out the other end here. This is the prototype uh, electronics board, same exact thing we have in the garage, just a little bit smaller. So we have um, our voltage comparator there as well. The uh, uh, pots to trim it and then we have an Arduino Nano rather than a whole mega board so we're replacing this for a whole mega board like that so it's a lot smaller and again it's capable of running all this and processing it all it's not that much to process mainly just uh, monitoring a few uh, uh, digital pins and uh, analog voltages and as well as putting out some uh, PWM signals um, like I said, I'm not going to get into the great detail of how it all works right now, but, and then yeah, so we have our power lines coming in, and then just the pilot signal, and the uh, relay control pin over here, and all that would be on one board. So this is, again, just a little prototyping, prototyping board, but it did work. There's some little LED indicator lights, and you'd see those at the front. But yeah, just a little proof of concept thing, that we can make the whole charger in the garage smaller, and it would fit into a little package just like this. And then I made it, I even went as far as to make it onto a professional PCB. I actually had one of these made. I made it myself in uh, just Eagle. And basically, I just named it Micro EVSE Rev A, as we can see here. Anyway, um... It's the entire thing. It's the whole thing without the Arduino uh, microcontroller. It's not. It has a has an Atmega three twenty eight right here, but it doesn't actually have a separate Arduino board anymore. So, um, we have a the same microcontroller that's on the Arduino Uno or the older Arduino Uno, and then uh, just everything fits on this board. Everything that you could possibly need to detect the pilot signal, to write uh, the to send the signals to the pilot signal and monitor all those and everything. It has everything that you would possibly need on here. So this is the full blown board. I haven't actually tested it out yet. I really want to, but I haven't had the time. I have to rewrite the code, which really sucks. But once I rewrite the code, I will um, definitely populate this board with all the components. As you can see, I have a ton of electronic components, even more down there. Oh my God. Anyways, so um, yeah, I, I, I want to get this thing rolling and possibly make it just an open source project. I made quite a few of them because I, I had a minimum quantity of five. So I want to test this thing out. It should work and um, possibly make this project a real thing, maybe like a Kickstarter project or something. But it would be really cool to make these uh, level two uh, electric vehicle chargers for under a couple hundred bucks, you know, instead of having... um these thousand dollar chargers you can make them for just a few bucks so that's what my goal is is to make this project something that's open source and that everyone can do and just make it without the expense because there is actually a project already out there open evsc but their kit is like i think like 200 bucks just to start and that doesn't even include any of the cables or anything like this board i'm not gonna lie probably cost me like a couple bucks to make if that and that's just because i ordered such a small quantity i could make like a, a few thousand of these things and sell them for just you know just a profit or not not even a profit i mean not a profit but a uh, just what they cost to make and then just send out the components or even assemble send them out assembled already and it could cost just as little as like a hundred bucks for everything out the door for a whole um, electric vehicle charger already assembled so that would be really cool so let me know what you guys think i just want to show you guys kind of this project and and just how I've come along with it and where it's at today. But anyways, I just thought I'd show you guys this thing. And if you guys are, are interested and you want to make your own level 2 electric vehicle charger, definitely leave a comment down below. And if I do get enough feedback, 
then maybe we can make something out of this. But till then, guys, I hope you enjoyed it, and like always, have a good one.